Sir, good morning, Shiva Reddy, sir. Uh, good morning, uh, Prashant. Prashant or uh, Sushant? Prashant, sir. Uh, Prashant, okay. Good morning. Good morning. How are you, sir? Good, good. So, good is, it, uh, is it uh, already live streaming or? Uh... It's a live streaming, sir. It's live streaming and uh, as well as the Zoom also. Both of us. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, good morning, Shiva Reddy, sir. Uh, good morning, sir. Uh, uh, okay. Sir, shall we start the session, sir? Yeah, sure. Sure. You are ready, sir. Welcome, and Welcome to the FTP. Uh, uh, madam, madam, good morning, madam. Thank you. Thank you. A long time seeing you, sir. Yeah, madam. <laughs> sir, how are you, madam? How are you doing? Fine, fine, sir. Okay. What things going on, sir? Uh, good man, everything is good. <laughs> Thank you for being part in the faculty development program and uh, your youth support made the uh, event. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. So I consider it is my responsibility because I am a, I am a co -co -co faculty member of our college. Thank you, sir. Shall we start, madam? Yes, yes, Prashant, you can start. Good morning, all the dear participants. Today is the sixth day of our faculty development program on the holistic approaches towards disease treatment, regulations, and pharmacological strategies. And today's is a well-renowned speaker, that is Dr. Shivariti Challa. He is currently working as a research scientist, the University of Illinois. College of Medicine, Peora, and he is also currently working as an KVS professor in the Department of Pharmacology at KVS Siddhartha College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Vijayawada. We are glad to have sir. Thank you, so, Yes, sir. Sir, uh, sir, com sir completed his B.Pharm and C. Viswabharati College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, JNTU Hyderabad, JNTU Kakinada and completed his MPharm Pharmacology in the University College of Pharmaceutical Sciences, Andhra University. And Sar completed his PhD at the Andhra University. And Sar has held so many positions, but from 2010 onwards, Sar is work, uh, work, worked as a, as a professor in the department in the department of pharmacology at KVS at the College of Pharmaceutical Sciences to till now. And Sar went for, for the research purpose in the year of 2019 at the Department of Cancer Biology and Pharmacology, University of Illinois College of Medicine, Peora, USA. And Sar held so many uh, honors and achievements also on his credentials. Sar also acted as government representative for the laboratory animal faculty inspections, that is, CPCSCA member, that is, a committee for the purpose of control and supervision of experiments in the animals. Beyond the SAR is also acting as an so editorial member for so many journals in a well-renowned journals like review editor for the neuropharmacology in the frontiers in pharmacology and neuropharmacology in the frontiers in the neuroscience and editorial member in the pharmacognosy research and so many journals are there. And on his credentials, SAR also received a grant in the year of 2016. So under the University Grants of Commission Government of India, which is a total cost of 5 lakhs. And the project entitled as Neuroprotective Studies of Biocanin A and Natural FA AH Inhibitors in the Animal Models of Diabetic Neuropathic Pain. And SAR acted as a reviewer for so many journals. And then uh, on his credentials, SAR is having more than 850 citations. And SAR is having a well renowned research person in case of diabetic neuropain as well as in the cancer biology also. SAR is acted as an evaluator, as a judge for so many conferences and the seminars. Uh, under under uh, the guidance of the SAR, total of 14 PhDs got completed. And then more than 50 MPharm uh, 
post graduation thesis sir our also completed and so many workshops also attended by the sir from the starting of the career to the till end and sir is having so many professional memberships like association of pharmaceutical teachers of india indian pharmacological society american heart associations indian pharmaceutical associations association of pharmacy and professional and professionals like this so many memberships are there and uh, and so many conferences and so many things are there to explain the sir but if i am taking the more time hey, i am uh, usually we are killing the time to introducing more amount of the sir because the time may not be sufficient for me also to introduce all the things so it's uh, a great yes, to uh, to address us today in this gallery so please share your all valuable knowledge to us and to enlighten us sir so i am turning over to the shivari sir thank you prashant thank you uh, a small a small correction so only two phd students awarded under my guidance okay the third one third one uh, is still doing it okay, okay sir fine uh, okay so yeah uh, can i can i share you my presentation share. yes sir you can share your screen sir Yes, sir. We can able to see your screen, sir. Presentation. Okay. So, is it in slide show mode now? The slides are not moving, sir. The slides are not moving. Not moving, sir. Uh, one minute. Let me close. Sir, now it is there moving, sir. Really? Okay, okay. Uh, one minute. Once again, sir. Madam, uh, speak a few words regarding the sir, madam. Yeah, me. Hello. Sir, if there is any problem, we'll share from our side, sir. Ah, uh, no problem. No problem. Me, no problem. Let me try. Now I request Dr. Karnashni, Madam, the organizing secretary for this program, to speak a few words regarding the Shivari Desai. Can I see the slides now? Good morning, uh, all the participants. We welcome you to the last session of the last day of faculty development program. Uh, Shiva Reddy sir is one of the well-known persons in the field of pharmacology. And sir has a lot of knowledge about the pharmacological aspects of drug discovery. The sir will be sharing his knowledge and I request all the participants to actively uh, involve and you can ask questions also related to the animal handling and uh, how to uh, do statistical analysis. Uh, uh, here also sir has sound knowledge. I welcome you sir for this faculty development program. And Thank you, actually we have uh, uh, about 180 participants in this uh, uh, FDP they have registered, sir. They will be joining slowly, sir. We will start the program and they will join in between, sir. Okay. Thank okay. you for accepting our invitation and being part in this FDP, sir. Thank you. So I am very, very fortunate to be a part of uh, this uh, wonderful faculty development program. Organized by the Department of Farm Cognition, Pharmaceutical Sciences. Uh, I am it is a small request, sir. Actually, your voice is somewhat breaking, sir. It is better to take off the earphones and you can directly talk, sir, which may be better, I think. But I am not sure. Uh, can you hear me now? Yeah, now it is clear, sir. Better than that. Okay, maybe. Can you, can you hear me good now? 
Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Fine, sir. It is clear. Okay. Sir, can you make it in your full screen, sir, the presentation? Somehow, uh, I'm rich. I'm hearing the noise. Uh, I'm, I'm hearing the voice only through this phone, through these earphones. Can you okay, sir, no. okay, okay, sir, you can sir. continue, sir. If there is any issues, I will tell you, sir, at that time. Yeah, okay, sure. Okay. Let me can you, check. Can you make it in full screen, sir? Is it possible? I, I will try to do on, on my one moment. Sir. Okay, so let me check now. Uh, can you hear me now? Clear, sir. It's clear, sir. Voice is clear, sir. Oh, clear. Okay. So I am I'm going ahead with the, without uh, headphones, okay? Yeah, sure, sir. So um, thank you uh, to the respected uh, principal, Dr. A. Sunita Garu, and uh, organizing secretary, Dr. V. Karunasri, madam, and uh, all the faculty members, all the co-faculty members of KV uh, Siddhartha College of Homeschool Sciences, as well as uh, the faculty members across uh, all the colleges who are attending this uh, faculty development program. So today, I would like to, without wasting much time, uh, I would like to present uh, the part of the research work that was uh, carried out in our lab. So particularly, so our, our lab is mainly investigating the role of MMP12 in the uh, post-stroke pathogenesis. So we, uh, we are fortunate uh, to receive the uh, NIH funding. National Institute of Health uh, is the uh, biggest, uh, largest funding agency in the USA. So we got uh, $1.9 million uh, grant uh, for the for, for five years. So this is completely, uh, this funding is, uh, the, the funding is mainly uh, assigned uh, to the, uh, the role of MMP12 in ischemic stroke. So let me move on the slides. So as you all know, okay, stroke is uh, uh, important, one of the important leading causes of death. So it is, it is uh, as simple as uh, it can be defined as uh, the failure of blood circulation to the brain is known as a stroke. So when you see the uh, stroke statistics, you can see the, okay, it is the second leading cause of uh, death worldwide. And uh, it is the fourth leading cause of death in India. And when you look at the USA, so it is fifth leading cause of uh, death in the USA. And uh, coming to uh, disability, I mean, to disability it is fifth leading cause of disability in India. So because in India, the mostly mostly the accidents are occupying the first cause of uh, disability in India. In India, so most of the people are paralyzed or are, uh, uh, are bedridden. Uh, yeah, yeah. in case of uh, road accidents. So coming to the uh, the other, uh, when you see that uh, death frequency, so every 40 seconds, someone, someone, someone has a stroke. Excuse me. So every four minutes, uh, someone dies of a stroke. So the, when you look at the importance of uh, stroke, uh, so we, in the, since it is uh, it is one of the imp important leading causes of death, so we need to. There is a. Uh, the slides are not moving, sir. Slides. Uh, I am in second slide now. No, sir. Actually, it is not moving, sir. So I am able to move it. Can Can you hear? See me? Can uh, see sir. Screen? Otherwise, can I share the screen, sir, from here? Yeah. Yeah. Sure. Go ahead. Yeah. One minute, sir. I will share the screen, sir. Okay. Sure. But is it visible, sir, now? Yeah, yeah, it is visible. Can I, uh, can I go with the next slide, sir? Keep, keep this one. Yeah, yeah, then be on this one, okay? I appreciate your help. Okay. So, okay, so, uh, 
uh, uh, i talk a little bit about theory and then uh, i thought i talk a little bit about uh, the methods what we are doing in our lab and then okay finally i am going to discuss the research work that was carried out in our lab so uh, uh, when you look at the can i go ahead uh, with the next slide yes sir yes sir yes sir we are able to follow sir uh, can i go ahead with the next next slide yes next sir slide. Oh, okay now next slide okay so one, one of the important points uh, in the incidence of stroke uh, uh, people use it to think uh, it is a stroke is a disorder of elderly people but uh, that, that's no longer uh, it's a disease of uh, elderly people because uh, the 63% people uh, according to the 2019 statistics uh, uh, around 63% of the people affected below 70 years of age that indicates okay it, it is no longer a disease of, uh, a disease of disorder of uh, uh and more or uh, okay, the women are more affected than uh, female sorry so, uh, the uh, female is more more affected than uh, men uh, so uh, particularly when you see the incidence and uh, as well as prevalence in terms of uh, mortality everything the women is more affected than the men so okay uh, as you all know so there are different different types of stroke so if the failure of blood circulation occurs to the brain uh, due to the lack of blood supply that's called uh, ischemic stroke so if there is a uh, the, the failure of blood circulation occurs due to the bleeding or hemorrhage uh, it, it is called as a hemorrhage hemorrhagic stroke so we we all know the incidence of ischemic stroke is 87% when compared to the hemorrhagic stroke so that's why the, the importance of uh, doing research for ischemic stroke is uh, uh, more important but uh, Whereas uh, hemorrhagic stroke, uh, hemorrhagic stroke is more fatal than the ischemic stroke, but the incidence and prevalence is more. Okay, it is very high in the ischemic stroke. Can you go ahead with the next slide? Okay, thank you. So when you look at the uh, when you look at the uh, ischemic damage in the brain, so the the affected area is uh, divided into uh, two two particular uh, areas okay one is okay one is called ischemic core and then another one is called uh, the surrounding the surrounding area which is affected uh, sur uh, which is affected uh, uh, around the ischemic core is called penumbra so uh, the core is uh, already the, the, the number of uh, the number of cells are the the type of uh, uh, excuse me uh, the the tissue which is uh, lying in the ischemic core is already uh dead whereas the 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 cells or tissues which are present in the penumbra region they are dying they are about to die but uh, so they are going to soon uh, going to die within 24 hours or 48 hours uh, next slide next slide please okay next slide okay so here uh when we look at the and the same thing okay i'm going to explain again one one or two important points so as the time progresses the penumbra uh, is going to okay, the ischemic core region is going to occupy the penumbra region that means that okay, the the infox is going to be enlarged and then finally uh, the and the, finally the brain tissue which is going to die is becoming larger and larger okay can you go can you get the uh and that's what okay uh, animation can i click uh prashant prashant sir sir okay can i click to play? i can i can have another animation yes sir okay okay so uh, you need to look at the, okay, all the three points so usually there is a uh, there is a factor in the clinical scenario and uh, even in the clinicians they are looking at uh, uh, how much uh, the extent of uh, penumbra region and how much uh, how much extent of ischemic core area they are, they are going to look at the brain 
through MRI scanning. So uh, the patients who are having uh, uh, the the more uh, the extent of uh, the penumbral region is more, then the, 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 the then the chance of survival of the patient is more as well as prognosis is good. So even uh, when I use the treatment, the treatment uh, treatment like thrombolytic therapy or uh, and even thrombectomy, that is going to uh, particularly the, the, the therapy is useful to protect the penumbra, penumbra region. So as the time progresses, uh, you can see the ischemic core is uh, being enlarged and then uh, the chance of uh, survival is uh, very less and at the same time, uh, the chance of uh, going into the disability is very high. So when you look at the MRI scan here, uh, nowadays uh, people are using the penumbral imaging. So uh, when you look at, uh, there are two types of MRI scans here. Uh, one is uh, diffused uh, imaging and another one is uh, perfusion, perfusion. This is called uh, perfusion imaging. This is called diffusion imaging. So here you can see clearly in the MRI scan, okay, uh, the ischemic core uh, can be seen in the red color and uh, the other penumbral region represents in green color. So depending on the penumbral region, penumbra, the extent of penumbra area and uh, depending on the collateral blood supply, the, the doctors or clinicians, they are going to uh, decide the, uh, the survival of the patient as well as uh, uh, the prognosis of the disease. Okay, go ahead. Prashant, can you go ahead with the next slide? Prashant, next slide, please. Okay, thank you. Uh, so since we have we have only uh, we have current current pharmacological therapy, pharmacotherapy is mainly. Uh, thrombolytic therapy. So that is the well-known tissue plasma activator. Are uh, so many other uh, drugs are available? Uh, Retiplase, alteplase, so many. The TPI is mainly uh, protecting the brain. Uh, you know, by, by acting uh, by activating the plasmalogen into the plasmin, it is going to dissolve the clot. So the mechanism is well-known, and uh, TPI is a gold standard drug in the ischemic stroke. The only thing is, uh, it has some limitations. So those are uh, uh, okay, those can be avoidable only when uh, when it is administered within the uh, three hours of ischemic within, within three hours of onset of ischemic stroke. Okay. Uh, next slide, please. Okay. So if you look at the uh, this MRI uh, scannings. So some of the patients who receive the TPA, they have deleterious uh, we have deleterious effects of the TPA. So if it is administered within three hours of ischemic within, within three hours of onset of ischemic stroke, so we can uh, protect the uh, ischemic, we can protect the brain. But okay, uh, mainly the harmful effects of the TPA outweighs the beneficial effects. If it is administered uh, very late, that means like. Uh, it is administered uh, after six hours of onset of stroke. So it has more harmful effects than the beneficial effects. So it is also uh, well known. So one of the reasons, okay, important reason is the TPI is, go is going to cause the BBB, BBB damage. So once the BBB damage happens, uh, we can see the, there is a, there is a, I mean, a hemorrhag hemorrhagical, uh, hemorrhagical transformation happens in the brain. So if you look at this uh, scanning, you can see the hemorrhage in the brain. So uh, TPA can cause the hemorrhage in the brain. That is the reason it is contraindicated in the hemorrh uh, hemorrhagic patients. So we, there are so many absolute contraindications and relative contraindications of uh, TPA. So TPA is beneficial only when it is administered within uh, desired time, like three hours. So, uh, okay, can you go ahead? Next slide. So today I am going to talk about uh, more of MMPs. So MMPs are nothing but uh, they are matrix metalloproteinases. Okay, they, they are widely uh, distributed in the body, and uh, they are uh, they are known to they are known to be involved in the pathophysiology of uh, various diseases. 
including lung disease and then uh, cancer and uh, okay, even stroke. So I, I just this slide mainly indicates uh, there are uh, MMPs are mainly classified into four types based on the structure. So this is the first category is minimal domain MMPs, and then the second one is hemoglobin, uh, hemoglobin domain containing MMPs, and the gelatin is this and the membrane type MMPs. So in this case, this structure contains uh, different uh, regions. So we have uh, different sites. So mainly this uh, H site is called uh, hinge site. The hinge site is mainly responsible for the binding of the substrate. And whereas the catalytic site is mainly responsible for the binding of the zinc. Uh, it, is, it, is, uh, it is attached to the zinc binding site. And uh, the, pro, the pro site is mainly involved in the, uh, it, it is responsible for the, uh, responsible for keeping the NGM in the inactivated form. Okay, so particularly the MMP12, uh, which is uh, coming under this second category. So MMP12 comes under this category. Okay, next slide. So if you look at the total MMPs, there are 24 MMPs, which are involved in the various uh, CNS diseases. Uh, if you look, uh, I'm not reading everyone. Uh, sorry, I'm not reading each and everyone. one. Uh, it is involved in neuroinflammation, epilepsy, and brain cancer. So when you look at the different MMPs, uh, MMA, MMA, MMP3 is already MMP3 is already believed to be involved in the stroke, and some of the evidence is available. But MMP3 is already involved in the stroke, and then MMP9. The role of MMP9 is also established in the uh, stroke. Because uh, MMP9 and MMP3 already they know they want to cause the damage in the BBB. Uh, so, and uh, recently, uh, slowly there is a growing evidence of uh, MMPs uh, in causing the BBB damage, and then uh, mainly they are causing the damage in the ischemic stroke. But uh, particularly, we are investigating the role of MMP12 in the ischemic stroke. So that was not established. So, so uh, we, are, we are the first uh, to investigate MMP12 in the ischemic stroke. Okay, next slide, please. So, I briefly mentioned about uh, so MMPs. Okay, how this is involved in uh, these MMPs are involved in various uh, uh, physiological and pathophysiological uh, mechanisms. So you can, if you can see here, the, it is compromising the vascular integrity resulting in the uh, BBB damage. So particularly, they, they, there is an evidence that, okay, the MMPs can uh, break down the tight junction proteins in the blood brain barrier. So that uh, further uh, uh, causes infiltration of macrophages in the macro, macrophages in the brain, and then it leads to the further damage of the brain in the ischemic stroke. But it is, it is also serving as a, so some of the some of the MMPs they are uh, signaling molecules in the normal uh, pathophysiology, as well as they, they, some of the MMPs they are also involved in the physi physiological uh, mechanisms. Okay, next slide. Present, next slide. Prashant, next slide, please. Okay. Is there any is there any problem in the in moving the slides? Maybe you have some difficulty. Uh, no issues, sir. No issues, sir. No issues. Okay, okay. Fine then. Okay, so then uh, if you want to go ahead like this without slides, so uh, that's also fine. Uh, yeah, yeah, it is better to keep the slides open. Uh, it is better uh, we can. Uh, I am okay, I am not able. Can to I make it full screen, screen sir? Uh, yeah, go ahead with the full screen. Full screen. Yeah. Is it clear, sir? Now. Ah, uh, yeah. Now it is clear. Yeah. Thank yes, you. Proceeds. Yeah. 
So I, I would like to briefly explain about the structure of the blood-brain barrier. So blood-brain barrier uh, contains uh, uh, the various components. Like uh, we have uh, endothelial. Okay, this is the uh, endothelial. This is the endothelial layer. So this again, it contains endothelial cells, which are uh, which are connected with the tight junction proteins. So these tight junction proteins are uh, mainly important uh, to selectively allow the molecules into the brain. So whereas uh, uh, okay, it, it is uh, covered with the basal, uh, basal membrane, basement membrane, so which contains uh, pericytes. And okay, you, you, you can see these are uh, these are astrocytes. Uh, they, they are the, they are connected to the blood brain barrier. So astrocytes are more important for the providing the nutrients and blood supply to the brain. And some of the neurons, uh, neurons are also connected to the BBB, blood brain barrier. So MMPs are believed to cause BBB disruption, and there is substantial evidence that MMP9 causes BBB damage. Okay, now, next slide. So actually, in order to make, make you, enable you to understand better, so I, I described a little bit of pathophysiology here. So, so that, okay, what we have done okay, in our research, they can be easily understood. So if you look at the pathophysiology, usually whenever, the, whenever somebody has stroke, that activates the glial cells in our body. So glial cells are the immune cells present in the brain. So this glial cells activation causes the secretion of various uh, uh, components like uh, cytokines, chemokines, MMPs, and VEGF. So all these, uh, uh, the, the secretion of uh, or uh, the, the production of all these uh, uh, cytokines, chemokines, uh, including MMPs. So they are going to uh, cause the damage to the uh, blood brain barrier initially. So this blood brain barrier, once, they, okay, once it is uh, uh, ruptured, slowly uh, you can see the either side of the, so this is the blood vessel, the either side of the blood vessel it is the brain. So you can see the, the other side of the brain, so slowly infiltration of neutrophils, they are entering into the brain and they are causing neuronal injury. As well as okay, even macrophages also, they cause further damage. So even macrophages, uh, they can also, uh, they, they, they are also a big resource of MMP12. So the, that is the reason, uh, the mainly infiltration of macrophages in the brain, they further increases the MMP12 into the brain. So when you look at here, uh, when, you, when you look at the tight junction protein, so this is the tight junction protein in the blood brain barrier. When you look at the structure of the tight junction protein, so we have different tight junction proteins like uh, uh, claudine 5 and uh, JO1 and JO2. And okay, we, we have uh, here, okay, I don't say occluding, but occluding also important molecule. So in our research work, uh, we have estimated the these tight junction proteins, uh, particularly the occluding. Uh, yeah, this is the occluding, and then uh, JO1 and then claudine 5. All these molecules we have we have seen the expression of uh, these molecules at protein level as a, at a, at a mRNA level both. So uh, this is the one uh, one image where we can see the pathophysiology of uh, MMPs. Okay, next slide. Okay. So there, the, it is also believed that okay, MMPs will cause uh, demyelination. So you know, we all know myelin basic protein is an important component of the uh, myelin sheath. So for nerve function, for the, for the conduction of uh, transmission of impulses, the myelin sheath is more important. So particularly uh, the so the MMPs when, when they are when they are binding to the myelin sheath and they are going to degrade the myelin sheath. Which is causing the demyelination of the nerves and uh, which is uh, damaging the brain further. Next slide. So, based on the, based on the preliminary data of mRNA expression of, uh, so we screened initially the mRNA expression of uh, all the, almost all the MMPs. And uh, then I am going to show the data in the next slide, in the coming slides. 
but we have chosen to investigate the role of mmp mmp12 because uh, there is a, a tremendous increase in the mmp12 expression uh, okay in the ischemic stroke brain so particularly we started the study with the mrna expression of uh, mmp12 so we when we see the expression of all the mmps so mmp12 expression is uh, relatively higher than the mmp9 until now the people reported only the involvement of mmp9 in the ischemic stroke but okay so we uh, to, to our surprise uh, we see uh, there is a dramatic or uh, very significant increase in the mmp12 expression by like uh, more than 200 uh, folds increase so based on that okay we started the study okay next slide so before going into the uh, this is the paper we published uh, in 2015 so even though i am i am not a part of this research work so currently i have been working in other projects so this was uh, carried out by my former postdocs uh, so this was published in the nature public and nature publication scientific reports so this uh, if you look at the title uh, this is uh, called uh, this is uh, post transcriptional inactivation of uh, matrix metal proteins called after focal cerebral ischemia attenuates the brain damage so actually we down regulated the mmp12 mmp12 and we have seen the how much protection it is offered so that's that's also called as okay people say and uh, there is a post transcription inactivation inactivation is also called as a uh, so we, uh, here knock down knock down or we can say uh, even uh, we silence the gene we silenced the gene mmp12 and then we have seen the consequent effects of the uh, this particular gene in the stroke okay next slide so before going into the, before going to the research uh, i would like to discuss okay about the model little bit and then uh, what are the methods we carried out in our lab so i think this part is more useful for the faculty members to learn to gain some knowledge so uh, this in, in this particular model so i i already given one talk in kv sir siddhartha so particularly i talked about the mco model of stroke uh, it is available in the youtube channel of kv uh, sir siddhartha college of pharmacy sciences so in that in, in that talk uh, i explain more detail about uh, this model okay, which experiment is better to induce the stroke and uh, okay so i impli- i discuss the physical care and post surgical care and all those things in a previous talk so if anybody is interested you can go to the my previous talk and okay, here i am not uh, spending much time on uh, animal model but i am spending uh, uh, various methods we did in our lab so uh, since okay, when, when you look at the structure of the rat brain when you look at the various vessels of the uh, rat brain so if you see uh, we have okay this is called uh, cca this is called common carotid artery and this is called uh, internal carotid artery and this is uh, external carotid artery so since okay, when you open the when you make the incision you can see only this part of the only this part we cannot see the internal part of the brain so this is the part okay this is the area where uh, the mci is located this is a middle cerebral artery the so most of the strokes occur okay, in the most of the clinical strokes occur okay, in particular region uh, so since it is not possible uh, to see the okay, total brain of the animal so we only thing is we can see only this part so here the filament is okay we made the okay, we, we give the cut uh, to the eca through the eca the filament is passed through the uh okay here it is passed through the ica and then okay we will advance the filament until it reaches the mca junction so here the distance between uh, uh, the origin of uh, ica and then uh, origin of uh, this ica and then uh, mca is uh, around about uh, 20 mm in case of rat in case of mice it will be 10 to 12 mm so whenever we uh, we are doing inducing the stroke mainly the, the the extent of damage is mainly occurs uh, how skillful you are uh, to uh, to you know, to advance the filament so when you advance the filament okay you have to stop the filament when you feel the resistance so the experimenter okay the surgeon who, who are doing the surgery so you should be well familiarized with the 
uh, this uh, this technique. So even though it is a little challenging for doing the experiment, but okay, you know, when when you follow the uh, when you follow the same filament with the with the same kind same kind of uh, uh, experimental procedure, okay, we can use the consistent uh, strokes uh, every time. But okay, here uh, the the more, most important uh, challenging task is when you reach this point. Uh, so the experimenter feel the resistance of the filament. So here, uh, when if you uh, the experimenter poke, uh, pokes the blood vessel more, it is going to cause the hemorrhage. So, See, that is the point where we need to be uh, very skillful. So without touching, without uh, causing the damage to the blood vessel, we have to uh, advance the filament until this point. Okay, so uh, next slide, please. So there is, I mentioned, okay, why people are doing uh, MCA uh, occlusion? So, okay, because MCA supplies the biggest, uh, biggest territory in the brain. So MCA artery it covers a lot of blood supply to the uh, main uh, important uh, large larger portion of the brain. So we have uh, okay, we have both sides. So we have both sides. We have MCA territory. So clinically it is relevant as well as uh, clinically we can also see the occlusions in the ACA region, anterior anterior cerebral artery also. But uh, mostly we see the patients submitted with the MCA occlusion. So the MCA territory is most frequently involved in human strokes. That's what I mentioned. Okay, next slide. So okay, uh, the people people might ask uh, why why should why should we do the ischemia and reperfusion? So usually people have the doubt. Okay, so we can induce only ischemia, ischemia, but why why to induce the reperfusion? So here, ischemic injury is uh, okay uh, one part, and then. Uh, when the blood when blood supply is restored, there is a because of the reperfusion, there is also some of the injury. So even though reperfusion has the beneficial effects, but it is also causing some extent uh, the damage to the brain. So whatever the damage we see in the brain, that is uh, attributed to the both ischemic injury and reperfusion injury as well. So it's not the simple ischemic injury. So in the in the clinical scenario also, this happens. So cerebral in the, in the cerebral ischemia, uh, particularly uh, the okay, people are. Uh, so I would like to emphasize one of the important point. So when I said okay initially the penumbra region, the people are trying to give the drugs to protect the penumbra region because the already core region we can't do anything. So just like that okay here uh, we can uh, by giving the drugs by giving the neuroprotective neuroprotective agents we can also. Uh, reduce the reperfusion injury. Uh, so that is possible. Okay? If it is uh, reducing the reperfusion injury to, to some extent, uh, we can also reduce the ischemic stroke injury. Next slide, please. So this is the setup okay, where we do the surgery. Uh, so if you have any doubts, okay, specifically, you can ask me, you can email me later. But okay, usually we use the isoferin anesthesia. Uh, we uh, we usually induce the uh, animal with a three uh, three percent induction of anesthesia, and then uh, we keep it in the in the, in the maintenance. Uh, also, we are using three percent because we established uh, we standardized that uh, that model in our lab. For mice, we use uh, induction three percent, and then uh, we'll come down to two percent of uh, maintenance. But here, okay, this is the place where uh, this uh, anesthesia is going to come into this chamber. So that's where we are, we are going to place the animal. The animal is being anesthetized and then uh, then transferred here. The mainly the temperature regulation is more important in this experiment. This okay. This uh, the surgical pad is uh, connected to the temperature uh, regulation. So if the temperature is not properly maintained on the pad. The animal is going to either die or okay, other, other, otherwise the, uh, there will not be any induction of the stroke. So if it is hyperthermia, if it is hypo, hyperthermia, so the animal is going to die with the severe stroke. If it is hypothermia, again the animal is not developing the stroke. So temperature regulation. So sometimes it is better to it is better to monitor the rectal temperature during the surgery, and uh, it can be standardized. The warm pad must be at 37 degrees. Otherwise, uh, the animal uh, either uh, uh, will not induce the disease or Sometimes the mortality will be high. 
Okay, next slide. So we after induction, okay, uh, after the induction of the disease, we assess the class the severity score. So this is the score we use in the rats most commonly. So this is called uh, well known as a modified neurological severity score. So here uh, we have uh, uh, total. Okay, the score contains uh, 18 points. So when you look at the uh, the different motor function uh, deficits, flexion of the forelimb. So usually when animal shows like uh, forelimb flexion, like the like, like uh, you can permanently see forelimb flexion. Are okay. I mean, uh, particularly four limb flexion is very prominent than the flexion of the hand limb. So we test already. We also test the place placement test. So we just uh, touch the vibrio to the bench table, and to make sure okay, whether it is able to whether it is able to place the one of the limb on the table. So if it is a stroke animal, okay, it is not able to even if you touch the vibrio to the bench top, it is not able to place. The hand, okay, the, the limb on the table. So the that indicates uh, the one of the yeah, it is vibrio. Uh, vibrio you know, is mainly sensory input. So it is not responding to the sensory. It is not responding to the sensory input. So we we, we need to test uh, both sensory functions and as well as motor functions. But uh, this neurological severity score, just like a clinical uh, score, this is this is called as a neural, uh, neurological score. There is a difference between. Uh, here uh, neurological and as well as functional but in, in the clinic in the clinically when you when you look at the patients the neurological uh, severity so it is based on the scores given by the doctors but whereas the functional functional recovery functional recovery is depending on the how best the patient is doing the patient is recovering so sometimes uh, there will be a difference between the so doctor might give okay he is having uh, more neurological deficit based on the neurological score but the patient may not, uh, patient uh, may or may not function, or it may, the function of the patient may be different. Sometimes even though the patient has more severe stroke as per the severity scores, but even the patient can uh, can, can function better than, better than what he, what is expected. So that's why, uh, so even though uh, what I would like to say uh, in this particular aspect is, so even though neurological scores are very high and the deficit is more, but sometimes the functional, the functional recovery is more in the patient. So I would like to say both are, not, yeah, both are not the same. So to decide the function, uh, we need to do some other tests. So okay, uh, in this particular score, okay, we are particularly using this score uh, either to include or exclude the animal. For example, okay, if uh, I can't include the uh, animal which is not developing the stroke. So for that, okay, uh, we are using the score as a mainly important uh, criteria. So out of 18 score, uh, let us say uh, 0, to 6, 0 to 6 score is a mild mild severity. And then uh, 6 to 12 is considered as a moderate severity. And 12 to 18 is a severe, uh, it is very severe, severe, highly severe. So here, uh, when you are including the animal, for example, if the score is uh, below 8, uh, we, don't, we don't include the animal in the study because uh, we have to include the animals only which developed the stroke. So that is the reason uh, we have set the criteria, set criteria. We are going to assess this uh, neurological score on the day of surgery as well as on day one. So based on the, uh, the two days uh, uh, criteria, we are going to include or exclude the animals. So in case of treatment, we, uh, we mainly consider the two, two to four hours after reperfusion, uh, the score is assessed. So based on that uh, score, we are going to include or exclude the animal. Okay, next slide, please. So one more thing I would like to tell you here is okay, if the score is, uh, even the score, total score is 18. So if the score is more than uh, 12, or 13, 14, the animal, okay, I don't see any animal survived after 14 score. Because uh, when I see uh, if it is more than 14, 14 score, so uh, we see sometimes uh, there are hemorrhages in the brain rather than ischemic stroke. So uh, it is more likely that okay, the, you will get a good, uh, uh, you will get a good moderate uh, stroke, uh, which can be survived for uh, 14 days or 21 days, uh, only when the MNS score is between uh, 8 to 12 or 8 to 13. That's a that's a good uh, uh, mean margin where you can uh, study the animal, uh, the, the drug effects on the animal model. 
Okay, next slide. Okay, so we are using the particularly uh, we are using the treatment, whatever uh, we are using the MMP12 suppression. So we are uh, suppressing the MMP12 uh, by gene silencing techniques. So there are different types of gene silencing. Gene silencing that includes uh, RNA interference mediated gene silencing and transcriptional gene silencing and transposons in gene silencing. And there are more advanced techniques like uh, CRISPR, Cas9 gene silencing. So I am not aware of uh, much other methods, but okay, I know about uh, RNA interference mediated gene silencing because okay, I have been working for the last three years uh, here. So I would like to discuss about uh, this particular part in the coming slides. Next slide, please. Uh, Prashant, can you can you go ahead? Okay. So here. Uh, before going to tell you how to uh, use the gene silencing technology, first we should know certain aspects. Okay, I mean, first of all, uh, we should know about uh, plasmid DNA and how to incorporate the gene in the plasmid DNA. So this is the uh, vector. Uh, this is the vector we used for gene silencing. Gene silencing technology. So when you okay, this is the P silencer 4.1 uh, CMV Neo. So this okay, this has uh, different reasons. Okay, so uh, you all know okay, plasma DNA. So is a, it is an extra chromosome, extra chromosomal DNA present in any any uh, organ prokaryotic uh, organisms. Uh, you can see uh, there are uh, two regions here, which is in green color and red color. So the red color region is called uh, BAM H1, and the green color region is called Hind Hind Hind3. So okay, then. We are going to incorporate the MMP12 sequence, MMP12 sequence. So, because since we are we are going to silence the matrix metalloproteins 12, so that the desired gene, whatever the gene you are going to incorporate, okay, we are going to incorporate uh, in this particular region. So, we are there, how to break down? Uh, so, how to break down this cl uh, plasmid uh, plasmid uh, DNA? Uh, the mainly it mainly depends on the we have different varieties of uh, restriction engines. Uh, using the restriction engines, uh, it will cause uh, a breaks at a desired place. So we can incorporate the our desired uh, gene uh, into the plasma DNA. So we this is uh, this uh, plasma DNA also has other regions called uh, neomycin resistant gene and then amcin resistant gene. Because okay, this, this should have a uh, amcin resistant gene or neomycin antibiotic resistant gene uh, should be incorporated because uh, when we are going to uh, put this vector into the bacteria or when we, when we are going to tra transform this vector into the uh, E. coli bacteria. So, okay, so when you are going to uh, place this uh, okay, vector into the E. coli bacteria, so and then we are going to culture the E. coli uh, bacteria. So when you when you grow it, so okay here we have uh, we should uh, we should see that uh, only the bacteria which uh, which has this plasma DNA should grow, remaining all should die. So that is the reason. Okay, this plasma DNA should contain uh, amcin resistant gene or neomycin resistant gene. Okay, in our lab, before uh, going to culture the uh, E. coli bacteria containing this plasma DNA. So we are going to add amcillin to the culture. So this is bacterial culture. So that okay. So only uh, the the bacteria which are uh, which are containing this plasma DNA will survive. The remaining all the all the bacteria is going to die because they don't have amcillin resistant gene. So that's how it works. So we need uh, we need to uh, we need to grow the bacteria or E. coli that has the or plasma DNA inside the bacteria. So the, the, that is the importance of the, this vector. We have different vectors, okay, depending on the uh, your study, you need to choose the vector. Okay, next slide. So this is what I mentioned, okay, this is the uh, plasma DNA. So we, this is the where, okay, so insert is present. So we have different group treatment groups. 
So in one of the case, we have the we need to take the vehicle group also for the for that purpose. So in case of vehicle group, uh, we instead of MMP12 gene, we just incorporate the scrambled sequence. So the scrambled sequence uh, doesn't uh, uh, translate. Okay, it has no translation potential. So it doesn't uh, produce any kind of uh, uh, protein or okay, it doesn't have any sense. So that is the reason. Okay, so particularly if you are testing. Uh, sometimes we need to test the uh, the sequence which is having a, okay so which is having a scrambled means uh, which is not uh, uh, which is not going to affect the uh, anything in the body so which is not going to affect our the yeah, yeah, in the animal uh, brain so uh, let me go ahead so here this plot okay once this plot uh, previous slide okay sorry uh, yeah, previous slide so once this plasma DNA, so it was, uh, uh, it was uh, once it is constructed and designed, then we are going to put it into the bacterial culture, and then uh, we can uh, incubate for uh, overnight, and then uh, usually 16 hours is uh, preferable. So it depending on the uh, depending on your gene copy. So if it is a low, low expressive copy or a high expressive copy, depending on the uh, the expression of the copy, you are going to keep the incubation longer or shorter. So our MMP12 gene is a low expression gene. So that's why we are, we are uh, uh, incubating for 16 hours. So once it is incubated, uh, so you can uh, see the number of uh, colonies, which is uh, so this plasma DNA has become uh, grown uh, very much in the E. coli. Next slide. So once that uh, bacterial culture uh, has uh, your plasmid design DNA in large quantities. You need to isolate, uh, you need to extract that uh, plasmid DNA. So for that, okay, we are going to use the plasmid DNA, plasmid synthesis. Uh, this is called as plasmid uh, synthesis. Using the, we are using the kit called uh, So using this kit, uh, okay, there are different steps involved here. So particularly in case of, uh, we are going to finally elude the uh, DNA here. So the DNA, uh, when, when, when it is passing through the filter, this column, so the DNA, be, DNA will be clogged to the filter. So when, when it is clogged, the finally, so remaining all the things, they are okay, all the extra material location, and extraneous material can be removed. So unnecessary things are removed. Finally, the DNA is clogged to the uh, this, uh, this filter. So, uh, the last step we are going to elude the DNA into the flask. So this is uh, your uh, plasma DNA. Finally, we got the plasma DNA. So this is going to be dissolved in the uh, nucleus free water. So yeah, in our lab we do yeah, we do it in uh, nucleus free water. Sometimes we, uh, people will, uh, will dissolve in uh, TCRDA buffer, TCRDA solution. Uh, so depending on the uh, sorry. Yeah, this is called uh, PE buffer. PE buffer, sometimes people dissolve in PE buffer. But uh, we, we usually dissolve in NF water. So the purity of the DNA is very good. Next slide, please. So after preparing the, uh, so after preparing the DNA, so what is the plasma DNA, so which contains your desired uh, MMP12 sequence, so our uh, scrambled sequence. So they, I think you need to check uh, the purity or quality of the DNA is very good. Uh, the concentration of the plasma DNA also, you should know about it. If you know the concentration of the plasma DNA, then only we can inject uh, that DNA, that uh, plasma DNA containing our uh, MMP12 sequence can be injected into the animals. Because we are going to inject that into the, um, uh, into the tail vein, through the tail vein, we are going to inject into the systemic circulation of the animals. So here, uh, when the purity is not positive, okay, we are not going to use the sample, and the concentration must be uh, it, it must be within the range so that we can inject the animal into the desired concentrations. Next, okay, it is called the equipment is called nanotrop. This is the instrument which is commonly used for uh, assessing the quality and the quantity of the RNA or DNA or any nucleic acid, even protein estimation also can be done. Okay, next slide. So here, 
uh, then came, I mentioned okay the, that whatever the uh, DNA uh, DNA we prepared so that the, the, the DNA uh, it cannot be uh, penetrated into the brain brain cells so even it cannot be penetrated into the cells as such so we we have to give we have to formulate into the a specialized formulation uh, which can be easily penetrated into the brain brain so that is the reason uh, we are using the in vivo jpi this is called uh, in vivo transfection religion so we uh, anyway any reagent or chemical which is used uh, to to inject a drug within the cells so that is sometimes people are going to do the trans in vitro transfection transfection so transfection means so for example you are going to inject uh, uh, your drug or your dna to the cell that is called uh, in vitro transfection but uh, we usually in our case in our lab so we are using uh, we are using in vivo jpi so it is called polyethylamine uh, pol polyethylamine imine ethylene polyethylene imine imine Ashant, can you hear me? Sir, please, Ashant? can you speak, sir? Yeah, now it is audible, sir. Oh, okay, okay. Continue, sir. Yeah. Okay. So here, uh, the nucleic acid is nothing but okay, our DNA, our plasma DNA. So plasma DNA, we are going to dissolve in glucose solution. At the same time, okay, so here, we have two components we need to mix it to prepare a nanoparticle formulation. So here uh, the DNA is dissolved in uh, diluted in glucose solution, and here as well as uh, the in vivo JPI also it is dissolved in glucose solution. So here the, the when you mix this when you when you are going to mix these two these two components, you need to be very careful uh, because there is a, there is a chance of precipitation. So this this is going to form the complexes, and it is going to form the nanoparticle formulation. So nanoparticles. Uh, size of less than 100 nanometers so uh, this is particularly useful to, uh, to deliver the drug uh, into the systemic circulation and uh, it reaches the desired cells where we want, we are going to incorporate uh, where we are, we are going to silence the mep12 gene uh, particularly this glucose is used because uh, it has no charge so dna has a uh, uh, charge so okay, that's why the, the the charge of the DNA should not be affected with the glucose. The glucose has no charge. That's why this is used as the vehicle. Okay, next slide. Okay, so this is how okay after uh, the formulation is prepared. So uh, we make sure that okay, there is no precipitation in the formulation, and uh, we are going to inject into the uh, into the rat uh, through the tail vein. So we, we prefer to give tailwind injection. So once okay, it is injected, okay, it will reach the systemic circulation and then it reaches the brain. So we are, our intention is to silence the MMP12 gene in the brain. So that I'm going to tell you how, how it is going to silence the gene. Next slide. So we know, okay, as I explained, there are uh, two, uh, two different using this uh, vectors uh, so we are again already i discussed about this method so earlier people used to use viral vectors to deliver the desired dna into the target site but again uh, here uh, we are using the uh, direct method so using the jpi uh, yeah, chemical agent okay next slide so here why we are using this uh, this particular chemical uh, chemical agent uh, to formulate the to formulate into nanoparticle formulation. So if you administer uh, DNA, if you want to administer DNA, first of all, 
so you see the dna has a uh, it has a uh, dna negative charge uh, so okay so, sorry i know no, i don't i don't know in the previous slide okay i mentioned uh, the dna has a negative charge and the cell membrane has also a negative charge so to enable the dna to get into the cell you need to have the positive charge on the dna so that is possible only so when you when you uh, make the dna into the uh, into the when you transform the dna into the positive charge thing okay next slide so here okay uh, the, this is what uh, we would like to uh, emphasize here uh, plasmid okay so this is the plasmid dna okay so this contains uh, this contains the sequence that sequence is called uh, shrna so uh, that is okay i am going to tell you different ty uh, types of gene silencing uh, uh, methods uh, later so we we can give either sirna uh, this is um, small interfering rna and then uh, we have micro rnas micro rna rnas now research has been uh, uh, very very much high uh, people are uh, people are investigating the micro rnas so sirna or micro rna they are going to silence the particular uh, gene which is not uh, required for function in the naturally in our body it happens like that but okay here we can also inject uh, this uh, sirna or okay, what we are using is uh, shrna this is a small hairpin rna so it has it is just like a hairpin which can be clipped uh, for the hair for the women so that uh, okay that hairpin in that hairpin that when our that hairpin is cut uh, the remaining sequence is going to be incorporated in the incorporated in, into the brain cells but okay initially uh initially when, when we are administering that uh, dna which is a uh, dna vector which contains the our sequence shrna sequence so that okay we are going to uh, mix with the transfection reagent this transfection reagent is uh, nothing but i have mentioned jpi so the previous slides i mentioned jpi so this is the jpi and plasmid so when the uh, this particular uh, reagent uh, it is giving the positive charge outside of the dna so the, since okay this uh, this particular uh, uh, reagent is uh, producing the positive charge surrounding the dna then uh, now dna is able to pass through the cell membrane easily so uh, that's how uh, this uh, this formulation is very useful uh, for the penetration of the uh, formulation into the brain okay so once it is uh, inside this dna okay, once the dna is inside uh, inside the cytoplasm so it is going to release the our original vector uh, that contains uh, uh, our uh, desired uh, shrna sequence so uh, that is going uh, that is going into the nucleus here so i am going to tell you okay what happens after uh, entering into the nucleus in the next slide next slide please Once it is uh, okay, this is the mechanism how uh, this okay, DNA uh, vector containing uh, our uh, mmP12 shRNA sequence. Uh, so here, this is this is the one uh, you can see here. This is our uh, sequence uh, we incorporated here mmP12 shRNA sequence. So this uh, this is going to release okay released in the nucleus and it is going to silence the mmp12 mrna mmp12 mrna it is going to call it okay it is going to silence the gene means okay it is it is going to degrade the mmp12 mrna degrade uh, mmp12 mrna so here we can uh, silence the gene in, in different steps maybe either uh, we can stop the uh, transcription or we can uh, degrade the mrna which is formed that is called uh, post transcriptional modification so in in our case uh, we are particularly when we give the mmp12 shrna it is going to release the sirna so this sirna doesn't contain uh, that hairpin structure so that hairpin was cut and afterwards uh, it is called as sirna sirna 
This is the SSR, SARNA, which is going to silence the MMP12 gene in the brain. So we, we, we would like to see, uh, we would like to see the, what are the effects of uh, silencing the gene in the ischemic stroke. That is the intention we are uh, uh, doing this method. So I, I have given another illustration here. So you can see, this is the helical structure. This is called HRNA. So once it is uh, entered, uh, so this is uh, this is uh, always uh, uh, released from the DNA. That okay, DNA vector which uh, whichever is present in the nucleus, that is going to continuously release this SH, SHRNAs. So that's why that is the benefit of uh, SHRNA technology. So it is going to deliver the continuously this SH, SHRNAs. So they are going to produce the effect uh, persistently for a long time. So this okay, once SH, SHRNA is formed. So okay, here. Uh, the, uh, this is going to attach to the risk complex. So this particular sequence, uh, with the help of risk complex, uh, it is going to cut the uh, MMP12 gene in the brain. So when it is cutting the MMP12 gene in the brain, okay, MMP12, MR, okay, MMP12 mRNA is uh, uh, degraded. So MMP12, MMP12 mRNA, since mRNA is degraded, okay, we can't see the vegan, we don't see the expression of the MMP12 protein. So that's how. We inhibit the MMP12 protein uh, protein expression. So in the animals. Next slide. Prashant, next slide. Prashant. Okay. These are the various uh, methods we uh, we use in our laboratory. So we are using the uh, PCR and again. Uh, so most of the techniques, uh, maybe uh, some of the some of you well known about it. But maybe some of the important points I'll just touch, uh, touch upon. So we have uh, here in our lab, okay, we do most commonly PCR and agarose electrophoresis. So this is a regular PCR. Uh, this is a quantitative real-time PCR. So this is called as real-time PCR, which is commonly used nowadays for uh, COVID test. And uh, then uh, we do immunoglot analysis, immunofluorescence analysis. So all these studies are used, most of the studies are used in this particular research work uh, where I am going to present. So immunofluorescence analysis, gemography, TTC, staining of the uh, brain sections, so histology, so yeah, events blue, extra SA. Okay, you can go through, go through, okay, already I explained about nanoparticle formulation of plasmids. Uh, so, Finally, we are going to assess the neuro neuro neurological behaviors. That is the ultimate function of the ultimate uh, functional uh, uh, deficits we can see in the animal. Next slide, please. So I think uh, some of you know about the regular PCR. So here, the PCR is mainly done to see the mRNA expression of a, of a, okay uh, of your desired gene in the test sample. So here we have, we have a, so what are the components required for the for running the PCR? Before before running the PCR, there are so many steps. Okay, I'm going to skip a little bit. So maybe I can explain in further talks if possible. But you can see the main components which are added, the primers are required, the nucleotides, and then the tag polymerase. Uh, for the regular uh, PCR reaction, we use the tag polymerase. For uh, the real-time PCR, we use the Cyber green, cyber green, uh, which contains the polymerase. So these are the components. We need the cDNA sample. We need the primers and then uh, nucleotides. The nucleotides and tag polymerase, they, they will come in the master mix. So we have, uh, we need the NF water. So all these components, once they are, uh, the reaction, okay, once uh, you load it into the sample, so the, that is going to be into the PCR machine. So you are going to, Run the reaction. So PCR reaction, uh, maybe uh, you may you must be knowing about. Okay, it has the different uh, steps like denaturing, annealing, extension. So finally, so most of the people they will run okay until 40 cycles. So if you see the significant uh, expression at the end of the 40 cycles, uh, then usually, so for regular PCR at the end of the 40 cycles, uh, so they are going to. So that that contains uh, I mean, large number of uh, ampli amplified copies of uh, of a desired uh, uh, gene. 
so that can okay, that can be loaded on the agarose gel and to see the uh, to see the qualitative qualitatively uh, okay, what is the expression of the genes so this, this can be seen after running the pcr we need to run the agarose gel so when you run the agarose gel okay later on you can take the you can um, visualize the band bands so based on the band appearance okay based on the location of the band okay you can identify uh, whether your desired gene expressed or not okay next slide okay so this is a real time pcr uh, so yeah, this is the most commonly nowadays uh, it has become very famous after uh, covid uh, uh, incidents so people okay because all covid tests are done using this test so in this also i am not uh, taking much time without taking much time i, I just uh, briefly explain so uh, here usually in the in our brain cells so we need to uh, first to homogenize the homogenize the brain and then isolate the rna so there are there are so many steps involved in the isolation of rna once the rna is isolated so rna is uh, very unstable we can't handle with the we can't hand, handle and see the expression of rna directly that is the reason we have to transform the rna into cdna so so many kits are available for the formation of cdna so cdna is very easy to handle and it is very stable to work with that is the reason uh, we are going to see the concentration of cdna based on that we can say what is the mrna expression okay so this cdna so we are going to take the same the sample we are going to take the cdna and the primers and then all the reaction components so here we are using the cyber green so this is a this contain this is a fluorescent agent so it is this, this fluorescent dye it is going to attach with the dna uh, when you run the pcr reaction uh, for each cycle okay we are going to run the 40 cycles also uh, for each cycle the rna the, the sorry the dna is amplified amplified and the dna is being amplified the DNA dye is more bound so we can see the slowly the fluorescence the extent of fluorescence is gradually increased so the based on the extent of fluorescence uh, we can see the signal here so when you see the expression of the gene uh, you see the threshold line here whenever uh, uh, your gene expression exceeds uh, means uh, your uh, fluorescence exceeds this threshold line that is the place where uh, your gene expression has started so this this is the place okay here in this example it is after uh, 20 25 okay very close to 21st cycle so this is called ct uh, ct value or uh, people say ct value so what we see what we express uh, uh, in the real time pcr is uh, uh, the number of cycles or ct values where the gene is expressed uh, and uh, when the gene started expressing and uh, it has reached the it has crossed the threshold value so that's how we can compare so we, if the, if this curve is more towards the right side the expression is very less because if it is uh, the curve is more towards the right side it is taking uh, it is taking uh, more number of cycles to express that means the expression is very less when this curve is uh, towards the left side the more, uh, the, the more left or the left side the curve is that clearly indicates the expression is very high for example if the curve is at 10th cycle that indicates okay the mrna expression is very early so the, the expression okay, it is upregulated more so finally i would like to say uh, say the, the curve is more towards right side this gene is uh, you know expression of the gene is very low when it is towards left side the expression of the gene is very high okay next slide please so coming to the western blot procedure so uh, this is uh, immuno immuno blot okay i am not uh, expert in this but uh, i have gone through the you know i have gone, i did uh, few experiments but i am not expert but uh, i think uh, many of the uh, indian researchers uh, uh, they do the uh, immuno blot very commonly so so you can uh, you can go through it uh, literature so i am skipping this slide next slide So this is gemography. So we used the immunoblot and as well as gemography also for uh, immunoblot for doing Western blot. 
so whenever we we prepare the sample tissue sample brain tissue sample after being homogenized we we divide the sample into uh, two categories so uh, we we divide the uh, sample into uh, two blocks so okay in the first block uh, for the first uh, first sample component we add uh, half of the sample we divide it out of the half of the sample we add the we add the protease inhibitors uh, that can be used for immunoglobulin blot half of the sample we are going to use for gemography so for gemography we should not use the protease inhibitors so because in the gemography we are going to see the enzyme activity so in this particular research we have we have seen the mmp12 activity i mean uh, sorry mmp9 activity and uh, some of the enzyme activities in this particular gemography usually uh, we use the elisa kits to estimate the uh, enzyme activities but okay this is also very uh, very good uh, uh, i mean uh, method to to see the enzyme activity so uh, we we did the mmp9 mmp9 uh, uh enzyme activity using this gelatin gemography so it is very simple when you are when you are preparing the sds gel sds page gel so you are going to add the gelatin as a one of the component in the uh the, the gel preparation so once uh, gel has a uh, gelatin so when you load the sample okay so sample is ready slowly all the different uh, proteins are uh, here okay it has gel since it has gel uh when, whenever your sample whenever your sample contains uh, the mmp or mmp enzyme that is going to degrade the gelatin so for example mmp9 is a gelatinase so it is going it is going to degrade the gelatin and cause the band there so you can see these bands these gaps which are mainly because of that enzyme has degraded the gelatin so in that location that's why we can see the band so sometimes okay this is more useful to identify the pro 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 enzyme and active enzyme sometimes okay when when uh, sometimes uh, certain enzymes they are uh, available in both forms so pro form and active form so you can identify both the forms uh, you can see you can visualize it next slide so coming to the results of our lab so this is the okay, uh, research we okay, we did uh we screened all the mmps for mrna expression so you can see right from the beginning mmp1 a mmp1 b mmp2 mmp3 7 8 9 10 11 so most of the mmps okay, we have nothing for mmps uh we see we screened uh, nine 8 mmps here so particularly if you look at the data uh, it is quite interesting that okay see what are the genes which are uh, uh, significant significantly elevated so this can okay, be this is uh, okay, in our model we have given uh, two hours ischemia and then uh, one day reperfusion three days reperfusion and five days reperfusion and seven days reperfusion so these are all uh, injury injury animals uh, no treatment in this slide okay so we haven't administered any treatment for these animals this is okay uh, we, we would like to see what are the mmp12 expression patterns in the uh yeah. stroke animals in the stroke animals so particularly when you look at the mmp12 you can see the it is uh, uh, it is uh, upregulated by 265 folds when compared to the sham so sham is the group where we don't uh, uh, insert the filament we do the remaining all the procedure but insert the filament so when compared to the sham okay over the sham it has uh, expressed by 265 folds so on the 7th day it is day, day 7 post uh, post ischemic stroke sorry post uh, uh, stroke uh, it is 7th day so we uh, after giving two hours ischemia we are going to remove the filament and then uh, it is considered as a reperfusion so on the day of uh, on the day on the, on the day of 7 so you can see the the remaining days also you can see on day 1 40 some folds 58 folds and then uh, so this much drastic period uh, a dramatic increase in the mmp12 expression is not uh, reported anywhere uh, until now so this is the our this is the first lab okay this has reported after publishing this uh, after publishing this paper this uh, uh, the uh, after publishing this paper and the next paper what i am going to show so with those papers uh, nih nih has uh, 
conversed with our data and uh, they have funded our lab with 1.9 million dollars so here uh, coming to here mmp9 so mmp9 is already uh, well known okay, reported uh, in the ischemic stroke so mmp9 expression is relatively 35 fold here on day 7 but when compared to the mmp9 expression you see the mmp12 expression is very high so this is the reason we started uh, research on the mmp12 when compared to the all other mmp so somebody can ask okay why you are specifically working on mmp12 so the, this is the reason this is the initiating for, uh, factor for our research next slide please so if you see the protein expression so mmp12 protein expression we studied uh, this is okay one day after reperfusion three day after reperfusion and five day after reperfusion and seven day after reperfusion so we have given two hours ischemia the filament is placed for two hours and then afterwards it is removed so in this uh, if you see, if, you, if you look at the mmp12 expression uh, gradually it is increased from day 1 to day 7 so the, the same thing was uh, uh, same thing same thing was reflected in the immunoblot analysis as well so first okay, after uh, first first time when we when we run the mmp12 the same blot is used for the gabdh as well so gabdh is an uh, housekeeping gene so the the equal band size of the gap dh clearly indicates our loading efficiency is very good in this in this particular blot so particularly uh, the same blot is used for the uh, gap dh as well uh, these are not different blots okay next uh, coming to uh, if you look at the uh, immunoglobulin study so we used the gap for studying the nuclei uh, well, you can see here this is this is a sham group this is a sham group and this is a day seven day after reperfusion this is 14 day after reperfusion so the seven day after reperfusion means the animal was uh, sacrificed on the seventh day and then uh, the brains were collected and then uh, we did the immunoprocess on the brain sections so here uh, particularly when you look at the sham there is the absolutely zero of the mmp12 expression so absolutely nothing but when you look at the seven days after reperfusion, you look at the mmp 2 expression. So this green color represents the mmp 2 expression. So this uh, blue color represents the DAPI. It, it stains the nuclei. So in here, uh, DAPI staining in the same field. Uh, DAPI is expressed very good. That means uh, this particular field has a nuclei. That means these are the cells which are present in the brain. So these cells are expressing the MMP12. That is the indication here. So when you look at the 14th day after reperfusion, so we did for uh, particularly for immunofluorescence uh, day 14 until day 14. So if you look at the immunofluorescence, you see same field is with the same field. There is a uh, highly remarkable expression of the MMP12. Next slide, please. So once okay, we have identified the mmp expression in the brain in the, in the brain of the ischemic stroke, we are interested to know uh, which cells are expressing mmp 12 So brain has so many cells. So brain has uh, neuron cells, and brain has astrocytes, and brain has uh, uh, we have uh, oligo oligodendrocytes, and brain has uh, uh, glial cells. So we have, for each cell we have we have chosen one marker. So this is an new n is a marker for the neurons. Uh, GFAB, GFAB is a marker for astrocytes. And MMB here, uh, MOG is a marker for oligodendrocytes. And uh, IBA1 is a IBA1 is a marker for uh, glial cells. So we would like to know uh, which cells of the brain expressing the MMP12. So for that, uh, we did this experiment. So particularly, when you look at uh, okay, uh, here, uh, this is the co-localization. So you have to see when the green, when the green color, the green color represents MMP12 and then uh, the red color represents the Nguyen marker. So Nguyen marker indicates okay, there is a presence of neuron. So this green color represents there is a presence of MMP12. When these are co-localized, so, when the green color and the red color overlapped, then it should be appear in the yellow color. 
that means uh, the neuron cells are expressing the mmp12 so here you can see the lots of uh, yellow color that is the overlapping of uh, neuron cells with the mmp12 so that indicates uh, the high expression of mmp12 by the neurons and as well as when you come into when you look at the gfap these are the gfap is a marker for astrocytes in the brain so astrocytes uh, uh, you if you look at the uh, this section there is no much overlap here so nuclei is present uh, sorry uh, okay, astrocytes are present here but mmp12 is present outside the cells so that indicates uh, astrocytes are uh, not uh, overlapped with the mmp12 that means okay co localization not happen so this clearly indicates uh, astrocytes are not expressing the mmp12 so this is how we can interpret the immunofluorescence data so in our study uh, here neurons are expressing mmp12 but astrocytes are not expressing the mmp12 but in uh, here when you look at uh, the third section so uh, particularly the some of the sections they indicate the yellow yellow color so here that means oligodendrocytes are also expressing the mmp12 so coming to uh, the last section the iba iba1 so iba1 is a marker for glial cells so you can see most of the green color is overlapped with the red color but primarily it's colored to yellow color so there is a huge co, uh, co localization of uh, both mmp12 and iba1 marker that indicates uh, there is a huge uh, glial cells are uh, expressing the mmp12 very very high next slide please next slide please so we we have uh, we did uh, some experiments to see in vitro and in vivo efficiency of plasmids expressing the mmp12 receptor in here so here we have given uh, that uh, shr in uh, incorporating into the plasmids okay plasmids containing or expressing the mmp12 receptor in here we have injected into the animals so for that okay, first we should know uh, here we what we would like uh, what we would like to see is here Uh, if really mmp12 sh what we have given is suppressing the mmp12 gene or not so for that uh, uh, we did the mmp12 experiment here so uh, these are the glial cells uh, glial sorry glial glioma cells in vitro this is glioma cells and uh, this is the in vitro experiment so this is in, in this glioma glioma cells uh, they, you can see the mrna expression and protein expression both so mrna expression of mmp12 MMP is uh, uh you can see in all the groups control group and then uh, mt vector group and then svsh group but when you see in this uh, when you see the treated group okay, this is called uh, this is the drug where we are trying to give uh, silence the mmp12 gene so that is really silencing the gene in in vitro before injecting into the animals we want to see we want to make sure our mmp12 sh is working or not, working very good or not so for that uh, We, uh, we we tested the efficiency of mmp12 sh in the animals so it is working very good efficiency so our mmp12 sh is, is able to suppress the mmp12 gene so this is a in vitro experiment this is the in vivo experiment so in the animals okay whatever we are giving we want to make sure whether uh, mmp12 sh whatever we are giving it is able to silence the gene mmp12 gene or not for that uh, okay we did this in vivo experiment uh, this is the efficiency of the mmp12 sh and in the in vivo experiment you see the expression of the mmp12 is very less in this particular group that indicates our mmp12 sh is able to suppress the mmp12 gene in the brain so in a similar similar is the case in the protein expression also so protein expression also very less in the treatment so coming here uh this is the uh, immunofluorescence uh, data again so mmp12 uh, expression we have, we have seen with the treatment okay how is the expression of mmp12 expression mmp12 this is untreated in case of untreated we can see the lots of mmp12 uh, appears in green color so and uh, you can see the other side okay nuclei the same field is having lots of nuclei so nuclei is expressing mmp12 so both are merged okay when when they are merged they are co-localized that indicates uh, this uh, untreated uh, animal which is expressing the lots of mmp12 but in, in the treatment group you see here 
So after giving treatment, there is a significant reduction of MMP12 in vivo. So this clearly indicates our in vivo MMP12 research is working very good. So it is able to suppress the MMP12 gene in the brain. Next slide. Next slide, please. So here, uh, before going to the uh, previous slide, please. So here, uh, we are uh, giving the stroke uh, two hours, okay, two hours ischemia and then uh, seven days reperfusion. We tested. So, but uh, we have given the drug injection 24 hours after the reperfusion. <coughs> Initially, the ambital expression uh, is more on uh, after day one. That's why so we uh, we given intentionally ambital SHR and A after 24 hours of the reperfusion. So this is how okay the, the brain is placed in the matrix, and uh, we have a specialized blades. So we are going to make the coronal sections. So we can the brain can be cut in uh, both the when you cut it vertically, that is called coronal coronal sections. When you cut it uh, horizontally, it is called sagittal sections. So uh, these sections were stained with the TTC, but uh, cutting these uh, sections also uh, it is very difficult because. Uh, uh, we need to freeze the brain in the minus 20 or minus 80, minus 80 for uh, 10 minutes. And then uh, as soon as we bring the brain immediately from the freezer, so we need to place it in the matrix. And okay, it is very easy to cut the brain when it is optimally hard. So when it is very soft, okay, we are, we are not going to cut properly. So that is the reason it is the uh, important thing. Next slide, please. So if you see in my world, if you can see our classmates expressing amphetal hysteria, uh, this one, uh, we already, uh, so the same thing is, uh, how amphetal hysteria is uh, uh, working good. So if you see uh, this section, uh, particularly, the, these are the histology sections. Uh, so we particularly uh, did, did the new and new and training. So in this uh, new and positive cells are quantified. So you know, this is the injury section and this is the treatment section. So when you look at the injury sections, uh, you can see uh, there is a very uh, few neuron cells. So new N is the marker for the neurons. So now the number of neurons uh, significantly came down in the injury animal, whereas the treatment animal, you can see again, uh, the neuron cells are recovered. That means MMP12 uh, silencing silencing the MMP gene is able to uh, is able to recover the MMP12. Uh, sorry, is recovering uh, recovering the neuro neurogeneration and uh, neurons. It's not we cannot say neurogeneration, but it is recovering the neuron neuron cells. Okay, next slide. So this is the gelatin demography. So since okay, we have also studied. Uh, since MMP12, I mean, uh, is involved in the BB breakdown, we studied the MMP9 expression also, MMP9 and MMP2. So particularly when we, when we studied, we want to know whether we, when we suppress the MMP12, what is happening to MMP9 and MMP2. So the, that's what we studied here. Uh, particularly, uh, if you see the uh, uh, image here, uh, particularly uh, MMP12SH is able to uh, suppress the MMP9 expression as well, both the okay, pro MMP9 and as well as MMP9. Whereas uh, it failed to suppress the MMP2 uh, because you can see the MMP2 expression, MMP2 expression is not altered in any in, in any of the groups. So that means the okay, treatment also MMP2 suppression is not uh, suppressing the not down regulating the MMP2. But whereas the MMP12 is suppressing the MMP9 expression. That means uh, MP12 is uh, maybe it is working in the upstream in the, at the upstream level, but uh, MMP9 is working as a downstream level. If you uh, silence the MMP12, so you can also uh, down regulate the MMP9 so that uh, we can reduce the BBB breakdown. Okay, uh, so similarly, we have also assessed the myelin basic protein expression. So this one. Uh, Myelin basic protein is uh, important for the uh, neuron. So it was uh, in injury in injured animals, their expression of MMP is very less. 
whereas it is required in the treatment group. Okay, next slide. So this is uh, just like Murray again, uh, no training. So we are uh, we did the immunology training in the histological sections of the uh, different groups. So you, when you look at the injury animal, so you can see the myelin basic protein is a uh, little disrupted, and we can see the less expression of the myelin basic protein. But uh, so it is a little bit improved in case of treatment group. Uh, next slide. Excuse me. Uh, I'm going to lock down after. Uh, so here, we also seen the expression of uh, DNF alpha along with the uh, MMP12. So we uh, we want to know so whether uh, uh, the, the, the nucleic the cells which containing MMP12 expression also has the DNF alpha expression. So because we can, uh, we are uh, presuming we are hypothesizing that okay DNF alpha is a downstream down, downstream molecule for MMP12 for MMP12. So so that okay when MMP12 is uh, inhibited or uh, suppressed, the automatically TNF alpha expression will go down. So if you look at this, okay, there is a co-localization of the TNF alpha uh, with the MMP12. So there is a more okay, in untreated group there is a high expression of TNF alpha as well as along with the MMP12. And uh, in case of treatment, there is uh, almost uh, we see very little localization that indicates uh, the expression of MMP12 MMP and TNF alpha both uh, they go they went down. So this we did in ischemic core as well as in penumbra, both regions. Okay, coming here, so we we uh, we tested okay with the treatment. So what are the genes? Uh, some of the apoptotic molecules and as well as the uh, cytokine. So MMP12 acid treatment is particularly is down regulating the DNF, uh, DNF alpha protein expression yeah. as well as the caspase 3. These are involved in the apoptosis. Caspase 3 is involved in the apoptosis. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, okay, I'm going to uh, skip okay, very quickly. So, because uh, we are running out of time. Uh, so, this is another paper which was published in the Stroke, uh, stroke Journal. Uh, so, here MMP12 is uh, inducing the brain BBP damage after the cerebral ischemia. So, go ahead with the next slide. Next slide, please. So, in this case, okay, we studied okay, all different timings. Uh, we have not studied uh, ischemia, only ischemia, what is the effect in the previous uh, uh, paper. So in this paper, we studied only uh, only without uh, reperfusion, what is the effect of ischemia. Even without ischemia, only, only ischemia is also upregulating the MMP12 uh, by many folds. Okay, same is the case with the Western blood as well. Okay, same the Western blood data also indicates a high expression of o. After four hours, four hours of ischemia, there is a more upregulation of MMP12 protein. Next slide. Next slide, please. Prashant, next slide, please. Prashant? Sir, there is a small issue in the network itself, sir. One minute, one minute. Sir. Ah, no problem. Okay. Madam, madam, uh, is that okay? I'm running out of time. I'm, I have only five minutes, another five minutes. I'm going to uh, complete, okay? Oh, okay, no problem, sir. Yeah, okay. I am just, I'm just uh, okay, maybe faculty members, uh, they will, uh, because since uh, okay, when I was working at the faculty, I don't know many things, but I am happy to share all these things. Uh, okay, next slide, please. Next slide, please. 
Is it visible, sir, now? Ah, yeah, yeah, it is visible. Thank you. Yeah, yes. So we studied the expression of the tight junction protein, so, uh, which I mentioned in the introduction part. The clotting 5 occurred in Jo1 and Gav H. So, sir, Gav H is a housekeeping gene. Uh, they usually, you know, those who are working on the blood brain barrier, they have to see the expression of uh, these proteins. So, particularly, when you see, we have given the IV injection as well as intra-arterial injection. So, both uh, in, in both ways, okay, when compared to IV injection, intra-arterial injection, uh, it is producing, uh, this is through, okay, this, this is through, okay, intra-cerebral intra artery, we injected. Um, because okay, whenever the whenever the filament we are passing through which okay, the same way, uh, then the same uh, path we we inject to the drug. Okay, so here if you see the data, if you see the data, okay, so two hours are uh, the treatment okay is uh, going to we have two hour ID. Okay, so this is the treatment effect actually. So according so in the, in the in the injury animals, you see the okay the, the, the drastically this uh, right junction protein expression is going down, but in the treatment okay they are all improved. Particularly intraarterial injection has improved a lot when compared to intravenous. Next slide please. Next slide. So we did the advanced blue staining uh, excavation method. So usually the blood vein barrier is in, intact. Uh, it is not supposed to uh, allow the advanced blue into the brain. So, particularly, we have studied uh, to see the BBB, BBB integrity, whether it is intact or uh, so. What is the uh, what is the extent of damage in the untreated group as well as treatment group? So, if you, if you look at the uh, so here the animal. So, usually when you when you look at the periphery of the peripheral part of the brain, so you can see the completely blue color. That uh, advanced blue dye is a blue color dye. So, except the brain, the, so even, usually the normal animals, so even though total animal is converted to blue, blue color, but uh, the brain will be in white color because the blue BB, red brain barrier doesn't allow the advanced blue into the brain. But whereas uh, in the stroke animals, so if you see the untreated animals, the stroke animals, the dye is going into the brain. That means BBB. Disruption is observed. Next slide. Next slide. Okay, this part, okay, I'm going to skip, okay. So, so here, uh, if you look at this uh, image, uh, particularly uh, the tight junction proteins, what you see, the tight junction proteins are degraded in this image. In the, in the injury animal, uh, tight junction proteins are degraded. That's what I would like to say. In the treatment group, they, they are little, little recovered. Next slide. Okay, so we, we have seen, uh, this is what I mentioned is in gelatin gemography. So we have seen the MMP9 uh, activity and MMP2, MMP2 activity. So in the, all the injury animals, so there is a drastic increase of MMP9 and uh, there is a little bit of okay, expression of uh, MMP2. So when you, when you look at, okay, we would like to study about uh, expression of MMP9 and uh, TPA because uh, there is well-known evidence that okay, TPA and MMP9 both are uh, involved in the disruption of the blood brain barrier. So that is the reason when you give the TPA, uh, it is causing hemorrhage after giving the after giving the TPA six hours after after the onset of the stroke. If you give the TPA, so it will cause hemorrhagic transformation. That's what the slide I have shown initially. So since TPA is also causing the blood brain barrier damage, MMP9 is also causing blood brain barrier damage. So we thought okay, MMP12. Uh, you know, we are going to study along with the. MMP12 along with MMP9 as well as TPA. So that is the reason we worked. Uh, we, we studied the TPA expression as well as MMP9 expression. So here, see, if you do see the MMP12, uh, when you silence the MMP12, okay, TPA expression is going down. So this is very interesting finding. 
so now recently we we did uh, uh, extensive research so we have we are studying the interactions between the mp12 and tpa so so that okay uh, sometimes so uh, the, along with the tpa we can also administer uh, mp12 uh, SH, sh or again, mp12 inhibitors or mp12 uh, monoclonal antibodies can be administered along with the tpa to prevent the uh, tpa induced hemorrhagic stroke hemorrhagic stroke or tpa induced hemorrhage this is the, this is going to be a uh, big finding uh, that is the that is the reason uh, we are studying the tpa and tpa in this paper okay next slide so i am concluding finally the results showed a predominant application of mmp12 approximately uh, 47 58 143 and uh, finally day 7 265 fold on days uh, respectively so in mco subject rats and mmp12 expression is uh, mainly seen in the neurons oligodendrocytes and microglia but not on the astrocytes but not in the astrocytes whereas uh, mmp12 suppression significantly reduced the NFOX size. And the expression of uh, myelin basic protein was also increased uh, with the MMP12 treatment, whereas the activity of MMP9 was uh, reduced, so which is uh, uh, harmful. So uh, the overall MMP12 treatment uh, has uh, caused, caused so many changes and uh, leading to the beneficial effects. So it is also reducing the extent of apoptosis and uh, it is also reducing the protein expression of apoptotic molecules that are uh, downstream to the TNF alpha signaling. Next slide. So, this is the second paper. Okay, the MMP12 suppression protected the blood brain barrier integrity by inhibiting the degradation of pi junction proteins. And here uh, I mentioned uh, they reduced the percentage of advanced blue dye extravation and infox size. So similarly, to reduce the endogenous levels of uh, other proteases such as uh, tissue, uh, such as TPA and MMP9, which are known to be involved in the VBB damage. Okay, next slide. So, so presently we are doing so many uh, ongoing studies. Okay, the ongoing studies. Uh, uh, I am going to, I am going to be the first other uh, for some of the papers. Recently, we communicated one paper. Years in uh, neuro, neuroscience. Uh, I am the first author. Uh, even uh, the KVS or Siddhartha College of Pharmaceutical Sciences is going to be updated uh, as, uh, uh, as I am uh, associated with the KVS or Siddhartha. And uh, we, we submitted one paper for uh, Neurochemistry International. Uh, both papers, uh, I am the first author. Uh, so, so, I think. Uh, uh, I worked very hard okay, to uh, to study uh, all this uh, uh, involvement of MMP12 in the skin. Uh, first one year I, I found very very hard to survive here, but I I, I had to learn so many techniques within less, within less time. Uh, these are the other projects we are doing. So uh, one of the paper we communicated recently to the journal is uh, we have seen the okay, MMP12 knockdown whether it is uh, recovering the and neurological deficits in the animals. So same thing we, we are going to study in the, we already studied in the MMA, male and female rats, and we are going to study the MMA, effect of MMP12 lockdown on uh, neuroinflammation. Uh, there are many projects which are going on. So still, because they, we have funding, lots of funding, that is the reason we are going to complete all this. Maybe possibly, maybe I will become uh, one of the others in most of the papers. Uh, finally, I would like to thank uh, Siddhartha Academy of General and Technical Education uh, for giving me opportunity and for supporting me to, uh, for doing the post postdoctoral position in our uh, in our college. So this is the uh, yeah, our uh, research lab members. I mean, particularly our supervisor, Dr. Krishnamurthy. Uh, he is the one. Uh, uh, he is the one who is. Uh, uh, so who supported me very well uh, in, in all the aspects okay, he, he taught me each and everything most of the procedures uh, which, I, which I am explaining in the lab okay, now I am able to do including surgery 
I am able to do most of the procedures in the macular biology techniques, which, which I don't know earlier, uh, three years ago. Uh, at the same time, uh, he also gone, gone through the, all these presentation slides and uh, he extended my support. Uh, he is also from uh, Agra University, uh, Anapana Madam student. He is a student of Anapana Madam. Uh, he achieved uh, many things in the USA. So he awarded so many. He awarded with the NIH grants. Uh, still, he has lots of funding. Uh, so uh, my colleague uh, also, he is also a senior most scientist. He worked in uh, 28 years in uh, Princeton University. Uh, uh, that is the NST where Einstein, uh, Einstein has worked. So uh, I am fortunate to work with uh, Dr. Verwalli and as well as Dr. Uh, Kornal. Uh, they taught me, they guided me very well. And uh, I am always grateful uh, to my PhD guide, Anapurna Madam, uh, who shaped my career like this. And uh, uh, so, so finally, I would like to thank uh, Madam, Madam, and as well as uh, uh, Dr. Karnasri Madam, uh, as well as the Siddhartha Academy of Technical Education, and all my co faculty members, they extended a lot of support when I worked in Siddhartha. So I would like to thank everyone and all the co faculty members. Wish you good luck. Thank you. So thank you very much, sir, for enlightening us with your practical knowledge and the practical skills that you are implemented in the abroad. So which are very, very familiar, which are very, very new for us, sir, to learn. Actually, it is also some difficult for us to understand most of the topics which are an advanced in the things, but you have explained in a simplified manner, in an easily understandable manner for us. And uh, that you have explained the events blue dye and uh, how it normal brain, how, why it does not take and why this injured one it will take. So if the injured one, it will take so and how it stains into the blue color. Everything we have enlightened us in a very good manner, sir. We are very thankful to you as a speaker, sir. Yeah, the procedures, sir, they are very easy. Right. When you have an animal model, we can just inject uh, and we can try. So we don't need many, many facilities. Okay, sir. Okay, sir. For certain things. Yeah, yes. I, I, am, uh, I request uh, if there is anyone uh, yeah, who we have doubts or client to clarify. Yeah, dear participants, if you have any queries, Sari is there to clarify or, you. Or on behalf of the faculty, or, um, you can also ask one questions or, or someone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. 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 Thank you, Sar is having very hands of good hands of experience and he is well explored with all the techniques, latest and advanced techniques. We are blessed to have a sir. So the participants are requested to uh, ask your queries to resolve your doubts. Anyone? I think the participants may don't have any doubts. Sir. That's why you were explained in a simplified manner. Uh, maybe I don't know whether <laughs> understood or not understood. <laughs> Le less, sure, sir. It is very clear and easy to understand also, sir. Even I'm a, a non-pharmacological person that I can able to understand that I have explained also. <laughs> okay. Madam, you can, you can also uh, ask some questions. No problem. Uh, but uh, I, 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 personally, I would like to thank the Madam once again. Uh, we used to work uh, both clinical projects as well as uh, both uh, animal studies together uh, in the college. Uh, I am always uh, grateful to Madam. So, Shivari, it is that the audience are asking your mail ID. Uh, yeah, my, oh, my email ID. Yes, sir. Uh, yes. Yeah, okay. Can I type here? Or? Yeah, yeah. You, you can directly put in the chat box, sir. And they will, okay. uh, maybe they may contact you directly. Just my yes, name sir. and pharma at the end of Gmail. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We, we got it, sir. 
thank you very much for your uh, knowledge sir for sharing your knowledge in the faculty development program actually uh, i go i hope i have i haven't taken much of your time i think so two hours it is sir actually it is a very, very elaborate uh, um, session actually but uh, you have made it uh, more concise and the experiments all you have concised and uh, uh, enlightened us actually you have taken us into a tour of this experiments sir <laughs> you have covered every aspect of the experiment designing how to now, now madam if anybody is interested i can train from here okay i can guide them okay when they are doing experiments yes yes sir so whenever they start doing experiments then only they will have doubts no sir you have done no. many experiments so you have given even the solutions for the problems which may be encountered yes madam yes thank you very much sir for your participation and thank uh, you madam sir we'll uh, we'll start our valedictory session you can join us in the valedictory session sir if you have time yeah yeah okay i can join madam okay sir yeah if there are any uh, questions also we'll post it to you sir if any participant okay, okay. asking any question okay madam thank, so, thank you thank, thank you again sir yeah. thank you again sir for enlightening us with your knowledge now it's a time for the valedictory function now i would like to welcome our beloved principal madam dr a sunita garu and uh, of this uh, fdp program entitled holistic approaches towards disease treatment regulations and pharmacological strategies madam can you please give me a few remarks on this occasion is it clear Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, madam. Yes, we can able. Hello, sir. How are you? Hi, madam. Thank you, madam. Very, I'm very good, madam. How are you? Happy, happy to see you. Thank you, madam, for giving our opportunity. So, very good morning to one and all. It's been very fascinating and engaging six days for holistic approaches towards. disease treatment regulations and pharmacological strategies organized by department of pharmacognosy from 22nd to 27th august 2022 we are very much thankful for the enthusiastic response from various professionals from pharma academic institutions for all the fdps the topics covered in this fdp are more informative the speakers are having enormous knowledge in the pharma wisdom the day one dr mahendran shekhar has enlightened on natural pro innovations in natural products essential role in pharmacy profession and its impact on healthcare system is he focused on the innovations using natural products and their role in entrepreneurship in pharmacy the day to dr m hari krishnan highlighted the importance of integrating ayurveda and pharmaceutical sciences ayurvedic treatments in various chronic diseases also the day 3 dr hemant kumar focused on various models of spinal cord injury in experimental animals and identification of markers from various blotting techniques on the same day another speaker dr digvijay verma explained the various systems of medicine and emphasized the standardization of drugs for high efficacy and potency the day four dr k mangathayaru madam explored functional foods and their importance in combating the covid era and its export exponential growth in the market due to low investment and more importance on the same day another speaker siddeshwar kishan 
has given overview on herbal pharmacopoeia. He explored the various aspects of herbal pharmacopoeia and the regulations of herbal medicines in the Middle East, Africa, Russia, and India also. The day five, Dr. Saba Manviji enlightened the knowledge about the route from herbal preparation to patent. The final day, Dr. Shiva Reddy Challa, being a part of KVSR's COPS, explored the pathogens of stroke, the, re the relationship between the stroke and relationship between stroke and keep pointing and its gene silencing techniques, etc. I express my sincere gratitude to all the speakers who have enlightened the around 180 participants and for sparing their valuable time with us. Thank you, one and all. I extend my heartfelt thanks to all the in one week FDP program. I congratulate the convener of one week online FDP program, Dr. Karnashri, head department of pharmacognosy and her team, Dr. Prashant, associate professor, Mr. Sushant, Dr. Jyoti Irmai, Mr. Ravi Shankar, and the fellow faculty members of KVSR's COPS for their collective effort to make this program in a grand success. Thank you, one and all. Thank you very much, madam. Without your support, we may not be complete this task in an easily and in an understandable manner also. And thank you for providing the necessary permissions and all the things to make it in a grand success. We are very, once again, thankful to the principal, madam, Dr. Yasunita Garu, for uh, making this function as a grand success also. And uh, on this occasion, I would like to welcome the organizing secretary and the HOD of the Department of Pharmacognosy, Dr. V. Karunashri, madam, to speak a few words and the remarks on this occasion. Thank you, Prashant. Can you share the slide? Yes, sure, ma'am. Can you be able to see, madam? Yeah, this is Shivari research slide only. Yes, ma'am. So we have come to the end of the faculty development program and it is time to celebrate how successfully we have completed this one week online faculty development program organized by the Department of Pharmacognosy, KVSR Siddhartha College of Pharmaceutical Sciences on holistic approaches towards disease treatment regulations and pharmacological strategies, which was held from 22nd August to 27th of August on an online platform. This program was inaugurated on an online platform on 22nd of August with a prayer song and was graced by Dr. Mahendran Shekhar, University Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia, Dr. Heman Kumar, Naipur, Ahmedabad, and our college principal, Dr. A. Sunita Madam. The resource person for the first day was Dr. Mahendran Shekhar, Associate Professor, Okay, this slide, can, can I have the previous slide, Prashant? This is the overview of participations. Uh, we have participants from various designations, professors, associate professors, assistant professors, lecturers, research scholars, students, clinicians, researchers, and MD uh, from Ayurveda uh, departments. About 184 participants have registered for this online program. On day one, we had this eminent speaker, Dr. Mahindran Shekhar, Associate Professor and Head, Department of Pharmaceutical Chemistry, Faculty of Pharmacy and Health Sciences, Royal College of Medicine, Para, University Kuala Lumpur, Malaysia. 
he gave an elaborate lecture on innovations in natural products essential role in pharmacy profession and its impact on healthcare system he highlighted the importance of innovations in herbal products with his in depth knowledge in this field he suggested the participants to think out of box to understand the need of the end users that is the patients and to stand as innovators in the global market on a day 2 the session was led by dr m hari krishnan an ayurveda physician educator and public speaker on ayurveda he shared his knowledge on the role of ayurveda in the treatment of most prevalent chronic diseases of today he explained the concept of healthy living which is the need of the hour the root causes for various ailments and herbal treatments were discussed extensively and he gave suggestions how to lead a healthy life according to the concepts of ayurveda according to uh, how to follow the basic requirements of health and how to be healthy he has suggested some tips also to the participants on day 3 we had two sessions session 1 was by the expert dr hemant kumar assistant professor at naipur ahmedabad gujarat he delivered a lecture on spinal cord injury animal model pathophysiology and treatment approaches he expressed his views and shared his knowledge in developing animal models for the spinal cord injury he gave a virtual demonstration of how to design the experiments on spinal injury and he threw light on evaluation of herbal drugs for this condition the session 2 was led by dr dikvijay verma research officer pharmacognosy coordinator for drug standardization program central council for research in homeopathy under the ministry of ayush india new delhi he talked on herbal drug standardization in homeopathic system of medicine as homeopathic system of medicine also includes herbal drugs for the treatment of many ailments this topic was selected in this sir in this fdp his session focused mainly on herbal standardization aspects and protocols to be followed to assure quality safety and efficacy of herbal drugs and herbal products the speaker for day 4 session 1 was dr k mangathayaru consultant herbal and food products isha arogya a division of isha life health solutions coimbatore she presented functional food matrices in covid era prospects and challenges she elaborated the functional food matrices and explained the problems encountered and offered solutions in researching with food matrices he also mentioned that in the form of food matrices several drugs the bioavailability uh, has increased when they are presented in the form of food matrices she created awareness on global market for herb based products the expert speaker for session 2 of day 4 was dr siteshwar kisan chaute from naipur ahmedabad gujarat he gave an overview of herbal pharmacopoeia who guidelines and regulatory aspects of herbal medicine in india and abroad he talked through various aspects of quality control of herbal medicines in india drug regulations to be followed in countries across the globe were also elaborated the resource person for day 5 session was dr sabha manvi associate professor sri ramachandra faculty of pharmacy chennai she presented her talk on herbal regulatory dossier preparation and submission she enlightened the participants on preparation documentation and submission of the technical document to the regulatory authorities the rules and regulations to be followed in india and abroad were also highlighted and the last session the last day that is today we had a session by dr shivareddy chella 
research collaborator, Department of Cancer Biology and Pharmacology, University of Illinois College of Medicine, USA, and HOD, Professor, Department of Pharmacology, KVSR, Siddhartha College of Pharmaceutical Sciences. He delivered a talk on role of MMP12 in post-stroke pathogenesis, a decade of research journey. Sir highlighted certain uh, points on how to develop a stroke model, how a surgery will be uh, conducted for the animals. He actually toured us towards the designing of the experiment, the problems encountered during experimenting with the animals, how to analyze the results and scoring techniques. Everything sir has given a brief idea of how to do experiments on post-stroke pathogenesis studies. So with this brief report, I would like to thank all the participants. 183 participants have registered for our faculty development program from India as well as from abroad. I thank all the participants for your active involvement in this FDP. I thank Siddhartha Academy of General and Technical Education for supporting us in organizing this type of events on online platform. I thank our principal, Dr. A. Sunita, for encouraging, supporting, and lending a helping hand. I thank my special thanks to Shivaredi sir and Mangatayaru madam and Narasimha Kumar sir who has supported us in selecting the speakers for this FDP and making this event a successful one. I thank my team, Dr. Prashant, Mr. Sushant, Dr. Jyotirmai, Dr. Ravi Shankar, and all my fellow faculty members at KVSR Siddhartha College of Pharmaceutical Sciences for making this event a successful one. And thank you one and all. Over to Prashant. Yes, ma'am. Thank you, madam, for giving the an overview of the FDP, which was a help from the 22nd uh, August to the 27th. And uh, thank you for giving it a glance. And uh, most of the participants also learned any some few points from this FDP, which may be helpful for them in their career at any point of time. And uh, on this occasion, I request any of the participants to share your valuable feedback. If you want to explore, if you want to say anything regarding the FDP, the floor is open for you. You can share your valuable feedback. Anyone, if you want to, please unmute yourself and switch on your video also, then we can able to see and hear you properly. I request any of the participants to give your valuable feedback on this occasion. The one week program, was very excellent, very excellent speakers in most of the Ayurvedic formulations, quality control, excellent message given by speakers from international and uh, national speakers about uh, recent uh, research trends that are very helpful in usage of uh, traditional medicines nowadays. I thank uh, principal, academy, members uh, and uh, Course, uh, for conducting this uh, type of uh, seminars in, in the recent developments of pharmacognosy. I hope in future uh, many methods, many new programs will be given. Thank you very much for the program. Thank you. Sir, thank you, sir. Thank you for your valuable feedback, sir. Thank you, Ravikumar, sir. Thank you for being part in this FTP. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. It's a great pleasure, sir, to hear from you. Thank Any thank other you. Any other participants who can share your view on this occasion? The floor is open for everyone. You can unmute yourself and you can uh, explore. Yes, sir. Uh, I'm Rayon Siddha from SVT College of Pharmacy, sir. Yes, sir. 
sir it is uh, as a, i am also pharmacognosy so it is yes. excellent uh, opportunity given to us sir to learn and also understand the concept uh, which are given by so it is very excellent sir thank you madam if it is uh, possible you can organize uh, like this program in future also we are very interesting to here and uh, join the meeting also madam thank you that is for conducting the, such an opportunity for us thank you sir thank you for your cooperation and support definitely uh, we'll take this as an inspiration in organizing many other programs like this and we can even have uh, uh, support from uh, sir like shiva reddy uh, for the uh, experimental designs also we can uh, ask sir to share in future delegates are very excellent madam you selected the delegates sir. very excellent uh, valuable information they given madam i thankful to uh, that is <clears throat> to all team and also delegates thank you sir any other any other participant can share you can Good unmute yourself i'm i'm dr malarkodi pelraj from wales institute of science technology and advanced studies it was really wonderful to watch all the resource person eminent uh, to and to get their knowledge from the various resource person thank you for uh, such a nice wonderful arrangement ma'am congratulations to the entire team thank you so much thank you madam thank you if anyone is there we will wait for one minute otherwise we will go for the for the uh, vote of thanks if anyone is there please come forward i think we can wind up uh, this one and uh, once again uh, we are very very thankful to all the participants which are from the different domains of the different pharmacy colleges located in the entire country thank you for your active participation one and all and uh, i am also very very thankful to all the speakers that are involved in this fdp without you we cannot move forward sir we cannot get anything also it is only because of your hard work and because you few because of your sharing of your knowledge the ftp is very very successful and without any motivation without any coordination we cannot succeed anything anything so the teamwork was only occurred because of our hod madam and the organizing secretary that is dr v kanushri madam thank you madam for giving your support to make this ftp as a grand success without your motivation it may not be possible and all the <clears throat> and all these permissions and all the things all the financial support was given by the our principal madam by contacting with the higher authority people and within a short time this event is happened because of the principal madam once again i am also thankful to the principal madam and the management of the kvsr siddhartha college of pharmaceutical sciences for making this event as a grand success so i request all the participants we will kindly by this today afternoon we will share the link in the our whatsapp group you can download your certifications of this fdp so which was already available we will give in the link in the google drive and then in that one you have one pdf file will be there you can download the pdf file then where you can find your name along with your name beside you can find the certificate number also so by that certification number you can download your certificate and you can use it for your future references so we will make it available by this afternoon itself everything is available just we need to post the link in your whatsapp group that is only thing so we are end we are ending this session by our national anthem i request our students to give the national anthem on this occasion जन्मदिन <laughs> जन्मदिन <laughs> 
and we are very very thankful for the students also on this few remarks we were wind up in the total ftp which was conducted from the 22nd to the 27th and once again we are very very thankful to all the participants and the speakers and the, for the everyone who make this ftp as a grand success thanks to all the participants thanks to the resource persons thanks to the uh, management and our team of karma cognacy and we'll wind up here we'll meet in the next uh, ftp or any other online offline platforms thank you one and all as your suggestions are given our hod madam will take it in a positive manner and surely we will shortly madam will come with another route of the ftp or any other seminar or webinar surely yeah thank you one and all for giving this active participation madam can we wind up this session yes yeah thank you